What's going on guys, Vic BP back with another Game Case Arcades video and today we are looking at the Party Edition Mini NES Killer. Now this I'm very happy about because this is the last Christmas order that I have of the year. Uh, going on vacation tomorrow, um, this video won't probably be out till about next week, maybe right before New Year's, but right now today is December 22nd. If my plane leaves tomorrow, I come back the 28th, I don't know when, whatever, but by the time you see this video, this is already, Christmas is over, but again, this is my last finally done Christmas order of 2018. But forget all that, let's talk about the main reason why we're making this video. We're talking about the mini NES killer. We got six controllers on this. This right is going out to a customer named Anthony, um, gave me a little message telling me that he went to the mall and he bought one of those 601 kind of BS mini NES, not a real, Nintendo NES, but it's one of those makeshift China ones. 601, he's told me it sucks, there's no games in it. He contacted me, and well, we're gonna hook him up with the mini NES killer. I do have to kind of rename it, because now Nintendo's being a little bit on the hard end of it, so I, I don't think I could name it the NES killer anymore, but basically again, this is not the actual Nintendo NES modded, so Nintendo, don't call me. Um, it's not a modded NES. Um, basically again, it's, it's running a Raspberry Pi. Um, 15,000 games. This system right here clocked in at 15,000 games. Four player action. We're talking about four player arcade. We're talking about four player N64, Mario Kart, Goldeneye. You think it, this thing can do it. For pricing, I'd like to say pricing on the, on the videos because who knows, maybe somebody's gonna look at this from three years now and my prices go up and down, but I don't name pricing on videos. But basically the customer on this one's gonna get the mini NES killer from Game Case Arcades. Uh, we got four Super Nintendo style controllers and two N64 controllers loaded with a 128 gigabyte SD card and the power supply. No HDMI cable included. If you need an HDMI cable, it's gonna cost you another 15 bucks, but for right now on this one, there is no, there is no HDMI on this one. But basically it's very simple. You plug it in, connect it to your HDMI. The wires on this, these are the corded controllers. So they are only about six to seven feet long. So keep that in mind when you are wanting to buy one of these things, you're gonna have to do it kind of like the old school con kind of like the old school consoles where you had it on the floor and then the wires connected to you, so just keep that in mind. We could do a wireless one, we could do wireless controllers, but the wireless controllers are pretty pricey. You're looking at like 50 to $60 per controller, so just keep that in mind. But real quick, let's talk about the NES Killer. Again, this thing clocked in at 15,000 games. I'm in a track mode right now, so it won't really tell me what each games are, but again, this thing's loaded, arcade, consoles, handheld, we even got some bootlegs on this. This thing's insane. But the big really cool thing is that this is probably the first one I ever sold that could do four players on this. This again is a four player configuration. The hardest thing again when you're buying these things you have to be careful, you have to watch out. I have my Pi set up for four players. So for example, there's a couple of arcade games like The Simpsons and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, those arcades, there's two different versions. There's a two player version and a four player version. This right now is set to four players. So I do not have two player uh, Simpsons on this. If you did want to play, let's say, alone, you have to connect the four controllers to be able to pick the different characters. So the SNES controller is modified and everything to work with the interface. So player one is your main controller, player two cannot control anything on the interface as far as the menu wise. So player one is your main one and basically we have it set where you could do select the game, go back, my shoulder buttons are the next letter, you could pick the next letter. Um, easy stuff, I always give a manual when I do it. But real quick, we're gonna load up the Simpsons game just to show you the four player action on this. Again, all the whole thing I always set to 16 by nine resolution because I personally like the full screen. We could set it up to four by three or to core. For this one, Anthony's gonna get the 16 by nine. Again, we'll, we have a video of how to modify and all that. But basically again, we got that. It's the volume's coming out of the TV. So you got that. Now check this out, this is where we do the quarters, right? So this is my player one. As you can see, I'm Marge. On player one is Marge. I can't pick Homer. So I have to pick... Now we have four players on that. So four separate controllers. We're gonna press start on these. It's gonna go through the cutscene. And you're gonna see, I'm gonna have four players, separate action, arcade action on this. You gotta love The Simpsons, great game. I played it, I spent $12 and quarters beating it alone. Check this out. So again, we have all four players on the screen right now. So again, if I do this, I'm Bart, we got that. 
I'm Marge, we're stuck together. <laughs> this is kind of like a tag team thing going on here. Lisa's here. Again, as you can see, four players worked. Very simple to ever exit out. You just do select and start and you exit out, just like that. Just to go through it real quick, some people get very excited. Some people got excited on my Instagram story, but yes, this does have N64 and this does run GoldenEye. Now the big thing again, this is a Raspberry Pi. Again, we're talking about, we're talking about tech, technical stuff here. The Raspberry Pi has no RAM in this thing, so it's gonna run games, but it won't run it perfectly smooth. For example, um, my 007 GoldenEye, when I was doing the, the campaign mode, it would stutter. You would actually hear the, the sound would stutter a little bit. Again, it goes through its whole boot up thing. Classic. Can't go wrong with that. So again, this is set. As long as you have the, the controllers in it, you can kind of hear it now. See, you can hear the stutter. I'm gonna go back. Four player multiplayer. kind of hear it again we got our four players here See? you do hear the stutter I mean I'm gonna reload it this way you could hear it again Again, you have to keep in mind that this is a Raspberry Pi. It's a very small computer. It's literally the size of my hand. So you can't really expect like amazing performance out of the thing. It'll play it. Again, we're gonna listen to the, the sound on it. I mean, it, it's got its frame rates. This one actually has the FPS here. Try to listen to it, here we go. Right here, watch this. See? Clocking in at 35, 38 frames per second. Usually the sweet spot is 60. Again, you hear it, it's stuttering. But it's more about like, I guess where it is in the menu. It's not just GoldenEye, it happens with a couple of the games, but see now we're good. I'm at 60 frames a second. I know for a fact if I did the mission mode, you're gonna hear it, it's gonna load up. Listen to it. See, I'm able to play it. It does slowly chop a little bit. But it comes in and out. You see, now I'm actually able to shoot this guy. If I can with one hand. <laughs> but you kind of get it, see? So the reason I'm showing you this is because I don't want somebody to call me like, oh my God, this is horrible. I mean, listen, for what you're paying for, it's a Raspberry Pi, it's not a laptop, it's not a computer-based system. If you did it on a computer-based system, it would be flawless. But, I mean, again, there's a couple of games that'll do it. Um, I think I was trying to play Super Mario 64 on it. You heard it a little bit, but it wasn't that drastic. I just touch up on real quick on the N64 controllers. This is always a little bit of a difficult thing, but my best suggestion is that if you are gonna play with the N64 controller, is to make sure that you have the controller plugged in before you actually start playing the game. So we're gonna go in. The other thing is sometimes on these, on the controllers they kind of mix up because it's a generic controller. So like for example, this one, enter is like on the C buttons for some reason. That's just how it is. But real quick, we're gonna load up like WCW, NWO. For some reason on this one, again, usually on the, on the Pi is there's four USBs. Typically it doesn't matter, but usually it should be on the top left. On the top left, it should be player one, two, three, four. But on the N64, it goes one, two, three, four. So, I mean, usually if it doesn't work, you'll figure it out, you'll just unplug it. But I always say that you should start the game with the controller already plugged in, as you can see. Usually as for a rumble pack, we don't have one, but you could always exit out. Exhibition, we gotta use a D-pad. I'm gonna pick my guy, it's all about the D-pad. Player two could pick his guy. I'm in, Chris Benoit's in. There you have it. I mean, it's pretty cool, it's something to get used to, but the N64, really, this controller should only be able to use for the N64. 
having fun with it. Uh, as you can see, like the C, I mean, again, it's always labeled X, Y, A, B. So, like, for example, the punch is on the C down. Run is like A, grapple. Oh, it's cool stuff. Now on the note, because we are on N64, we do also have, at least for Anthony's setup, he bought also the two N64 controllers. USB controllers, they are wired. They will work with the N64. So for example, he wanted, um, he wanted to play uh, the wrestling game, like WCW. So WCW did need the whole D-pad and the joystick. So you do need a N64 controller to run kind of wrestling games like that. And again, he wanted definitely the WCW, you have all that here. We're gonna load up. I think he wanted a world tour. Now, if I load this up, actually, you're gonna be able to see it. I'm gonna let, the, I'm gonna let it run. I'm not gonna cut this. We're not gonna do any cuts, so you can at least kind of see how long it takes to boot up. Not that it takes forever, but it does take a little bit of time to boot up. Um, for this one, for example, this game, you can't play this game with the Super Nintendo controllers. Um, I'm gonna show you exactly why right now. Basically, I couldn't, uh, it says something about a game pack. I'm trying to press no on it, and I can't bypass the screen on this. See, I cannot go up and down on this. It won't let me go. So I can't even get out of the screen right now, unless I was able to go up and down, but that's where you have to use the control pad on this. I don't have it connected, but that's why some games you do need the N64 controller. Again, if you ever want to exit out, start and select together, we're back. All in all, great system, great setup, 15,000 games. It fits in the palm of your hand. He's getting everything. The whole box is gonna go out, all the controllers. It's a really cool and very entertaining thing. Again, we call, I, I'm gonna call this one the party um, edition because we do have all four controllers for this and it's gonna get intense. Again, big thing to keep in mind is that when we do arcade, it is set up to four player arcade. Um, other than that, the joysticks and the controls will work with Super Nintendo, but Super Nintendo was a two player console. You just gotta keep in mind that the arcade ones are set up for four players. So if you did want to play like again, The Simpsons alone, if I was alone and I want to play as Bart and I want to play as Homer, you do have to connect all four controllers for that to work. On that note, there's not really much else I could talk about for the NES killer. Again, game case arcades, Vic VP. We make arcades, I make consoles. You think it, anything gaming wise, anything retro wise, I'll make it happen.